This is likely to be one of the largest tornado outbreaks in our history. Jill and I pray, and I sincerely mean this, pray for those who've lost loved ones and for those who are uncertain of the fate of their loved ones and the debris that you see scattered all over uh, the hurricane's path. They lost their homes, they lost their businesses, and it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. And we still don't know how many lives are lost or the full extent of the damage. But I want to emphasize what I told all the governors. The federal government will do everything, everything it can possibly do to help. So those are comments uh, just in the last day by President Joe Biden uh, talking about the uh, tornado swarm that has taken uh, many lives across a number of states. And as with the president's comments there, uh, even this morning, we still don't know exactly how many have died. It is at least 90 and that number is almost certainly going to go up because many people are still unaccounted for. Um, and you know we know how this works, the longer they stay unaccounted for, the less likely it is that they will be found alive. Um, but as of right now, uh, people have been killed in Arkansas, Illinois, Missouri, and Tennessee. Kentucky, though, had the single largest uh, loss of life. Uh, Governor Andy Bashir of Kentucky said at least 64 confirmed deaths had happened just in that state. Again, that is likely to go up. 18 of those victims there were still unidentified, and the age of the victims ranged from just five months to 86 years old. Six of the victims uh, were under 18. And uh, you know, there was a, an incredible amount of uh, loss of property as well. People died in their homes, they died in many different places. But some of the, um, I guess, the, the, the worst single instances of uh, death happened in factories where workers, and there's a lot of good questions about why this was the case starting to be raised. Workers were still at work, for instance, at a candle factory, the Mayfield Consumer Products. We can bring up this shot of the, the wreckage there. Uh, let's see, um, a number of people had been working, a number ended up uh, dying there. Thankfully, uh, it seems like while initially uh, over 100 people were unaccounted for, most of them have been found. Um, the leader of that company was asked though why the factory hadn't been shut down as people were starting to you know, fear that these tornadoes were coming. And the leader said that the company had made the best decisions under the circumstances, insisting that having employees hunker down inside the factory was safer than sending them home on the roads. Okay, well, apparently the more than 110 workers at that company had about 20 minutes of warning. And so this isn't the only factory, the only like you know big place of work we're gonna talk about Francesca, but. Like they're they're gonna they're gonna come up with ways to to cover their asses in terms of why they didn't send people home, you know, why they weren't better prepared for damage to the to the the actual physical infrastructure. Um, but a lot of people lost their lives, and I think it's right for people to be wondering at this point, uh, you know, where the blame should be distributed. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna talk about another corporation soon, but kudos to that, you know, CEO for at least. Having some kind of response, albeit an you know insufficient one. Uh, yeah, 20 minutes on a, a tornado that's heading right for you, but definitely hours before for t tornado warnings and tornado watches. And if you think um, that your factory could be in the path within miles of it, then take it off. You know, take that day off. Let let workers stay at home safely. One of the things about that candle factory being leveled and I'm glad that many of the workers have been accounted for, although I don't know how many have been accounted for with their lives. Um, is that they're, they were using actually inmate labor in that factory. Uh, and one of the gentlemen uh, who was injured went to the hospital. He was like, um, it was like third, you know, a burglar kind of like three, whatever, like third degree or whatever it is where you like do it a lot. The point is, is that, He's now free, he like walked away from the hospital and people are like, "Oh no, a killer is on the, no, no he's not. Um, a man whose labor was being exploited and extracted from him for probably, I don't know, less than a dollar an hour. Cause he's an inmate at a corrections facility nearby, was working at your factory uh, and yeah. Maybe he maybe he got well and left, I don't know. I just, I just that story well, just kind of stuck with me. This, as like, this, well, 
we'll we'll get to a little bit of this, but these sorts of instances can like they seem to always bring about some people become incredibly selfless. There's reports of like people like bringing like loading up trucks with food and bring it to the area and just distributing food and restaurants are doing that too. So there's always there's the good people and then there's it's also monsters that come about as a result of this and we'll get into a little bit of that too. But you know, I, I was watching video of people talking about um, the experience of being in that candle factory during uh, the, the trade. And you can see the footage, maybe why don't we put up the video by the way? Um, so you can see a little bit of the before and after. It was just entirely leveled and it's hardly the only building in which that happened. But you had um, one woman who said that a, a concrete wall collapsed on her and then she was able to get out. One couple with eight kids, the, the woman survived, the husband uh, did not in that case, just devastating. And so look, it, it might be, it, this is the initial aftermath of this. We cannot know for sure exactly when everyone knew whatever about how bad it was likely to be and why the decisions were made for some of these companies to continue to operate. Um, but I, yeah, I, I would be mad, I, I would be mad to, to wonder why people were like, in areas that are, it's not rare that tornadoes sweep through, that there wouldn't be proper um, you know, protective shelters for them, that people are like crouching in bathrooms hoping to make it through this horrific tornado. Yeah, it, it, it just quickly, it's like it's a combination of a couple of things, right? A lack of respect for workers' rights, but also this is like a one in a hundred year tornado that will continue on. Uh, Professor Michael Mann has been speaking about how actually climate change makes tornadoes worse. The combination of sort of a lot of extra humidity in the air, um, plus the twisties. I don't know what the twisties are, but they sound scary. Um, but so like, I don't know. This it will continue to happen, and this is why we need to do things like pass the Build Back Better Act, and not only that, but even more than what's being asked from President Biden, which is to help companies and and factories not Amazon, but help a lot of folks to be have climate preparedness so that there is a safe place if and when there is a tornado that yeah, might only have like a few hours or 20 minutes of warning. But hey, guess what? Thanks to some government subsidies, some funding, people don't have to die because of these extreme weather events that are being are, are becoming more and more commonplace. Yeah, 100%. By the way, at, at that particular company, um, as of Sunday, at least, they said that eight employees were dead and six were still missing. And that is, that's considered a vast improvement from what people had thought earlier would be the case in this particular factory. And yet, it's like, imagine if at your place of work, you lost eight coworkers. You'd never, like, the company would never forget about this horrendous thing that happened. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's an improvement. And as Francesca is saying, um, all of these are becoming more common. It doesn't seem that there is a single way that the earth can you know, strike back at us. It isn't becoming worse in terms of fires and hurricanes and, and tornadoes and even somehow earthquakes becoming more common when it would seem as if that's impossible. Thanks to fracking, um, mm. they found a way. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Cast or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.